when designing a website, the layout is everything. But picking the right tool to create that layout is confusing. Both Flixbox and Grid are awesome tools, but knowing when to use each makes all the difference. Hey guys, this is Nacha from Expro Elementor Add-ons. In this episode of Tips and Tricks, we're diving into the differences between Flexbox and Grid so you can pick the right one for your website. Flexbox is perfect for simple designs. It's like a powerful tool designed to arrange items either in a row or in a column. For example, you might use Flexbox for a navigation menu that needs to align horizontally across the top of your site featuring the site title and buttons all arranged in a single line. Grid is perfect for complex layout. It offers two-dimensional layout with rows and columns. It is ideal for entire web page structure. For example, here you can see the icon boxes created with a grid layout. You can see how the two dimensions provide a fake structure. Now let's check them out. Click on the plus icon and it will ask you which layout you would like to choose, Flexbox or Grid. If you select Flexbox, you will be provided with 12 layout styles, all of which are one-dimensional, either in a row or column. Let's go with this layout for an example. In Flexbox, you can give different widths to the individual section. Simply click on the container icon and set the width you like. For example, setting one container to 60%, and now setting the other container width to 40%. Just enter and it's done as you can see over here. Now let's drop a widget in each section. Flexbox gives you flexibility. You can add as many items as you want in a section. And that's not all. You can even change the direction of widgets. But keep in mind that it will only follow one dimension. To change the direction, click on this container. Here you can see the item section, which is not present in the grid section. The container has column or as we say vertical direction by default, but you can change its direction from these options. If you want the widgets to be in a horizontal line, choose the row option. If you want them in a vertical line, select the column option. And with the row reverse and column reverse option, you can easily swap the directions of the elements by clicking on these options. How cool is that, right? So this is how Flexbox works. Now let's try the grid. In the grid layout, you have limited options. It offers you six layout styles. You can see rows and column in the grid layout, providing a two-dimensional direction. Let's select this layout. The grid provides a structured layout you cannot adjust the width individually for the sections and all the sections will have equal height and width. In the item section, you can see a grid outline option. If you disable it, you will only see the first section. The other two will be hidden and will become visible one by one when you drop a widget in each section. Let me show you. Now the second section is visible. If you do not want to hide the sections and want to see how many rows and columns you have, just switch the toggle to show. The grid may not offer as many layout styles, but you can add as many rows and columns as you like. However, each row and column will have the same number of sections. You cannot delete any. The next thing is that in the grid layout, you can only add one item to a single cell, unlike Flexbox. If I try to add another widget in the same section, it automatically moves to the next cell. You cannot add more than one widget to a single cell. Next, we've got the auto flow option. This options allow you to decide which section you want to fill first. For example, if you select raw, it will fill the raw section first. Similarly, if you select column, it will fill the column cells first. A pro tip, if you want to use grid and display more than one widget in a cell, just drop a container in that section and add as many widgets as you want. 
However, they will have one dimension since it is a flexbox container. If you want to have two dimensions in a single section, then drop the grid container and add widgets in those sections. This is called as container nesting. So this is the main difference between grid and flexbox and how you can use them. And here is the best part. Elementor's latest update has made grid more powerful. It has recently added a new feature, grid items. With this option, you can increase column or row span. This gives you flexibility and you can design however you like. Let me show you how you guys can use this. Let's add another grid. Dropping the image widget and text editor in the grid. In the advanced tab, you can see this grid items option with draw and column span. This option is not available in the flexbox section as you can see over here. Now let's go back to the grid and now when I change the column span to 2, it takes 2 column space. And when change the raw to 2, it takes 2 raw space. Oh, let's add another widget to see the difference. Adding button. Now increasing the raw to 2. Now you can see how the button moved on the other side. And the image takes 2 raw space. This feature is a massive time saver and gives you way more control over your layout. Best part, no need for custom CSS. This makes it easy to create dynamic, responsive layouts with more control. I will be creating a video on this feature on how you can use it to create amazing layouts. So stay tuned. So what do you think about this new feature? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing tips and tricks.